Welcome back. If you tuned into my previous design and rehouse video, this is the second part where I talk through the steps of another two builds suitable for housing my praying mantids. Enjoy. Next up, Silnea humoralis. As you can see, they're getting close now. Maybe one more molten here would be okay, but might as well get him or her rehoused sooner rather than later. And I've just noticed as well that. We have a molting giant Asian mantis here, Hirodula membranacea, and that probably means that we will need a bigger enclosure for her as well, because she's now really looking like she's too big to fit in here. So same as with the Deraplatus desiccata, we've got the drainage layer and some substrate in here. The only difference being at the top, what I've tried to do actually is, rather than stretching those tights over the top lid, put a netted mesh and just silicone it to the top instead. The reason being, I mean it's going to serve the same purpose but it just lets a bit more light in so if I'm viewing them and I've got my lights on it should let the light through a bit better. So a bit of an experiment but uh, yeah it just looks a bit neater too. So we'll see how that goes. What my plan is Similarly to another video I'd done where I made sort of a zen garden with Marimo moss balls I'm going to try the same kind of thing and but this time use these moss balls Split them up a bit and lay it down almost like a carpet hoping that it looks like a Grass effect. I've not tried it. So I thought this would be a good chance to give it a go and see how it turns out You can kind of see it here in my Chlorahar Pax Modesta enclosure uh, it's not fared that well, to be honest, because it's an algae. I dare it doesn't. These marimo moss balls probably don't do too good outside of water, um, so it's not really held up that well. It doesn't look that great, but it might look better as grass because it just seems to keep its sort of greeny look. Even if it turns a bit yellow, that's fine. Still might look quite cool. Just want a kind of glass, grassy effect. So I've got something to rest these on, just because they are a bit wet. I don't want that all over my desk. No, they don't smell too bad. So yeah, I want to split these and make almost a nice carpeted effect to then go in the tank. There we go. So I just kind of split them, laid them out flat. Looks quite cool. You can't really see the colour very well, but they're really nice and vibrant green. Let's fit them in here. So here we go. I think that actually looks really, really good. I'm actually really impressed with that. It's got different textures, different shades of green. Whether it will hold, I don't know. This is an effect I'd really like to get down because it's difficult to get green in these enclosures with them being uh, relatively dry. You know, I've tried growing moss and things in these enclosures, but it doesn't really do too well. It just seems to die off. So I'd like to find something that is a sustainable green look and this might be it but we will have to wait and see over time what this does because it might just I don't know go horrible and look rubbish but we'll see so I've added some wood at the back there because I think that kind of makes it pop a little bit more I don't normally add many stones in these kind of enclosures because they get a bit heavy otherwise so I've kept it minimal but I've also got some slate in the bottom here Got some reindeer moss that I want to do something with. I haven't really used it much before. It feels super rubbery. I don't know if it holds its colour like this. I guess it does. If it does, that'd be awesome because there's different shades you can get and things. But uh, let's pop some of that at the back just to get a bit of texture and a different colour at the front. It looks really cool actually because it's almost like little trees. could even try and get this attached to here and make like a little tree. I think I'm going to do that. Just means that because I'll be using glue I won't be able to put the mantis in. Oh, that's a shame. I have no idea why, but the glue just does not stick. Just tried two different types and it just will not stick. So make sure you wash your hands if you ever use cyanacrylate glue and then go working with acrylic because 
I've made that rookie mistake many times where you touch the acrylic and it will completely mess up your acrylic. It just goes a horrible cloudy colour and streaks like so awkward. This is why I prefer those front opening front opening tanks because it's so awkward to get in from here. Especially on these tall thin tanks. Awesome. I think that's a nice little scene. The only thing now is adding some hanging spots. I mean, he will probably spend most of his time up on the top here anyway, hanging from the mesh. But we should give him some extra options. There we go. I think that looks a bit better, actually. Now we should have some way to climb up to the top. Not that I think he'll struggle with that, because they're pretty good climbers. And he's got some canopy to hang from, as well as his mesh top. So whilst the bottom looks nice and pretty, he probably will not be spending any time there. But that's fine because he's got his branches and he's got his mesh top up here. Quick thing as well, so like I was saying about the acrylic, you can kind of see on here that that side has gone... Can you see that? Maybe you can't. Kind of, yeah, there we go. So you can kind of see this edges of the acrylic's gone a bit cloudy and I think that's where the reindeer moss had some super glue left over on it and made contact with the acrylic which then makes it go that horrible cloudy colour and you can't really get rid of it so that's a mistake on my part I think the best thing is if you're using acrylic just absolutely steer clear of any sort of cyanacrylate glue or super glue I don't know I think it's the same thing but Either way, just steer clear of glue because you're inevitably going to screw up somewhere and touch a bit of acrylic or get some glue on it or something. I'm really happy with that little scene so what I'm going to do now is give it a bit of a spray down and then leave it for a while just because it does have that uh, silicone in there. Let that kind of dry off for 24 hours and then we can move him in. And also from checking up on Giant Asian Mantis, she's now finished her molt all out, looking good, looking nice and fresh and green, very pristine. But she does definitely need a bigger enclosure now. The size of her, mad. It's the next day, let's get our wide-armed Mantis rehoused into his brand new enclosure which hopefully he will enjoy. There you go, grab onto this. I don't know why these guys are touted as being aggressive because I've never had any issues with these. Maybe it's because they're aggressive with their food, I don't know. He's gonna need some encouragement. Bonk, 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 bonk. Enjoy. I'm also going for a very quick redo of this enclosure, which was for another ghost mantis I've got. It was just really messy. I hadn't really done anything with it. So I'm gonna go for this, which is just a cool kind of twisted branch I found and sit it in there. And that should be enough. Just keep it really minimal. All I've done is took this yeah, twisty branch I've got here. And then glued some of these smaller branches onto it. And then glued some of these kind of pine nut things or whatever they are. I don't know what they I don't know what they are specifically. Just look cool. Like a little Christmas tree almost. Perfect, Milton Jr. And there he is, just chilling in his new house. Loving life. Looks wonderful, but I'm sure he will spend most of his time clinging to the top. 
I think I'm going to try putting some of these dairy cow isopods in with Milton Jr's enclosure just to see how they get on because I've had isopods in my ghost mantis communal they've been doing okay um, I think I don't it doesn't even look like the mantids bother trying to eat them which is strange because I thought they'd just snap them up and there'd be none left but uh, let's give it a try and just see how these get on because it'd be good to have some bigger cleanup crew members and we'll just have to monitor him and see if he eats them I don't quite know how I'm going to do this, but I guess I can just... Because I'd rather have little ones, but I don't think I'm going to be able to find little ones. So I may just have to brush the bigger guys in. Well, there's loads in here. Just not so easy to get out. Okay, that should do. There's loads in there, actually. More than enough. Need some oak leaves in there for them to munch on. Although I'm sure they'll find Milton Jr's poops plenty nutritious. And they will eat the malt as well. There we go. Now you've got some cool little flatmates, Milton. What do you think of that? And there we have it. Three enclosures which should now see these guys through to their adult stage and make a nice forever home for them to live in. So I hope you enjoyed this two-parter. Consider subscribing if you like this kind of content as I will certainly be posting more like this in the future. Take it easy, be kind to insects and goodbye.